morning, good morning and good afternoon, everybody, from wherever you are joining us today. We have a very interesting company that we are receiving. So two companies, that's, uh, that, that's showing how you are blessed. So we have uh, AMP. I won't tell you what they, uh, what they are doing because they are uh, the two of them there. So they should give you enough information. And we have point nine. Also, I won't tell you. So all I can say is actually is there is, a, uh, there is an investor and an investee, right? So that's all I can say for, for, for the moment. And this is our, our podcast interview when we bring into you very exciting people in the sector that are moving and shaping uh, the sector and also the, uh, the continent of, uh, of, of, of Africa. So, uh, Zet and Steon, uh, good morning, good afternoon. How are you today? Very good. 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 Afternoon to you. Doing well, thanks. Excellent, excellent. Luis, hello. How are you? I'm well, thank you, Tony. Excellent. So, let me dive into the question. So, because I can see some people are salivating. So, I'm just going to start, obviously, ladies first. So, uh, Steen, I'm just going to uh, 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 start with you and uh, have a brief introduction about yourself and, and, and your company, and that would be great for us, please. Thank you very much, Tony. I'm Stina. I'm one of the co-founders of Amp Technologies, together with Svet um, here on the call. Uh, I'm the COO, and Svet is our CEO. Um, and shortly about Amp, a it's an operational platform for decentralized renewable energy systems, allowing operators to have a full portfolio view of their systems that they are operating, uh, independent of what manufacturers they're using for their hardware or the technologies that you know, they're using for these systems. Um, we see AMP as basically a tool to accelerate the global shift um, in the electrification uh, across Africa, uh, basically going from using fossil fuels to more decentralized renewable energy. And we believe that AMP is the software tool that is needed to, uh, to facilitate this. Excellent, I'm sure you're gonna tell us uh, uh, more. So let me now move into uh, uh, to you, Luis. Would you mind please introducing yourself and also the company so that our audience can get to know uh, who you are, please? Yes, sure. So my name is, is Louis Copé. I work at a fund called Point9. Uh, that's primarily a remote fund uh, now, actually. Uh, and we invest in very early stage uh, software businesses anywhere in the world. So we've been around for about 10 years now. Uh, and we were the first investors of a bunch of like successful businesses. Some of them have become um, large ones today. One of them is a company called Zendesk, which was a small in Copenhagen at the time, in Typeform, which is a survey company out of Barcelona. Yeah, we've done about 110 uh, investments uh, so far. Some of them are really early stage companies. Some of them are, are much bigger right now. Um, and our core area of focus is, uh, is indeed software, uh, but that we sometimes kind of particularize around uh, different uh, industries. And, and MP is our uh, first investment in the uh, energy sector. Excellent, that, uh, th that's great to hear. If I can stick uh, with you just for now, because I wanted to know, as we're talking about AMP today, can you tell us what specifically has interested you and your fund on, on this company AMP? What actually set them apart? Can you tell us please? Yes, so just as context, so our job as uh, early stage investor is to like identify teams and markets where we feel that there are an inflection points when it comes to like the penetration of technology um, and to try to meet, invest and support teams which we believe are the right ones to kind of drive this change. Uh, and we've been following the energy markets and I actually was introduced to Svet, I think about two years ago uh, now actually by an angel investor I, I've known and, and spoke to about different types of businesses and he was an angel investor in, in AMP and mentioned that the company was doing something very interesting. Uh, so we started speaking with, with VET uh, at that time at the, comp the company had I think just a handful of customers but we, so I started learning more about uh, of the space and I have to admit that like I was fascinated by um, the change that was kind of happening in the countries in which um, AMP is operating, primarily like Nigeria, 
uh, at the time uh, where we could see that like renewables and especially hybrid systems uh, relying on PVs, batteries and, and diesel generators uh, were actually used more and more. And, and we could see um, that the pace at which this change was actually happening in Africa was unprecedented. So that, that's one, and that kind of spiked our interest for, for the market. At the time, the company was a little bit too early stage, but we kept in touch uh, with that. Um, and maybe every uh, month or two, I was receiving an update, and I was seeing that like, the company was doing uh, like very, very well in the sense of like they are adding customers one after another, and which was aligned with our initial assumption that something was happening um, in Africa, and especially in Nigeria, uh, in that case, in terms of like paradigm shift when it comes to energy generation. Um, and, uh, and in that case, that AMP um, was the core software that was um, enabling this. So that's like the, the, the two um, side of things. One is like why we're interested in this market and at the same time, like um, our willingness to work with the team because it felt like they were operating um, at, at the right pace. So that's uh, what's got, what, yeah, what, what, what got, got us excited. And I think in general, like to give you a more context, we've been investing in like lots of different markets and we see that sometimes um, interesting opportunities start in um, developing countries and end up uh, being global after. And maybe one of the examples they can give you is like we invest in a company that was building software for a microfinance institution uh, in Bangladesh about eight years ago now, uh, which was a small company at the time. And now this company has grown to like truly global business and is like a core banking infrastructure for most of the large neo banks like Revolut, which you might know um, in Europe and 26 and a bunch of other, uh, you know, large companies. Excellent. That's a very extensive response, but uh, very, very good. And what I picked up there specifically is that for any company that are listening to us, so if an investor is saying to you, no, at the start, you know, keep, keep going because they may come back later. And that's what has happened uh, with you, uh, with, uh, with um, Zvet. So I wanted to know, so Zvet, so what does that represent for you, this investment? Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks, Tony, for your question. Um, and hello to your, to your listeners and viewers. It, it represents, um, it represents two, two main things for us. I mean, first of all, um, it obviously gives us um, a, a good amount of, of financing to pursue this business forward and pursue it bravely to continue both serving our existing customers, but also go out there uh, and look for new customers, uh, find new opportunities to add value to, uh, to the operations of our customers with our business. Um, and just, just find more ways to have an impact really. Um, but the second thing that does is, you know, by bringing on board um, a fund like Point Nine uh, and also a couple of others that joined uh, that joined this round, it it really gives us um, the sort of sounding board and guidance of of investors who've seen these kinds of businesses um, go through uh, these early life stages before, and can give us, you know, really excellent advice about what to try, the kinds of things um, that may lead to success in the future and the kinds of things that are likely to be the most valuable for our business as we, as we go forward. Um, so, I mean, in, in, in that respect, um, it also helps to have investors who fundamentally understand what the early stages of building a software business look like um, in, in something like software as a service where, um, at the start, I mean, let's say your revenues are not going to necessarily be that, be that great, but there are specific ways you can focus yourself and your growth that are likely to both result in success for you and result in impact that you can have for your end customers. And, and yeah, having investors by our side who can really guide us through some of those steps uh, is really valuable, while at the same time, of course, bringing to the table the the experience that we have in, in emerging markets, the experience that we have in energy and other niche fields where we've developed, um, you know, very compelling solutions and very comprehensive networks over the last, uh, the last few years that we've been in that. Thank you very much for that, Zvet. Luis, let me just come back to you because you are an early stage investor, which means that you are used to be handling risk, especially 
lots of risk at the start of any business. So at a time where some people, some investors still see Africa as a very risky place to do business, I was actually wondering what has excited you in the uh, decentralized renewable energy uh, market? Yeah, so it feels like there are two components to your question. One is about investing in Africa as a kind of European fund and another one about the yeah, um, decentralized energy market. So I, I'll take these two. So the, uh, on the first one, I think uh, we're global funds. So we've invested in 28 different geographies so far. Um, out of the latest three investments we've done, one is in Armenia, another one is in Scotland, and this one is between Amsterdam and, and Nigeria. The underlying thesis is that the, the beauty of like, you know, software and especially software in the cloud is that you can build a global business from anywhere. Uh, so at the end of the day, the way we see this is like, what's the best market to, um, what's the best team to back wherever they, they, they start from to build a global winner. Sometimes you end up finding it in Paris where I am right now. Sometimes you end up finding it um, in, in Amsterdam or in, in Nigeria uh, in this case. And yeah, as I told you before, I think we were interested in, in these markets because as you know, early stage investors, we counterbalance risks uh, by having an opportunity to find outsized outcomes. And this is only possible when you meet um, very fast paced growth. Um, and Africa is definitely a, pl a place where we see very fast paced growth and especially um, in the energy markets. Um, so, yeah, I guess that answers like your question, like why Africa and why uh, uh, the energy market specifically. Then maybe last point on this is like uh, one of the reasons why Africa is so interesting in terms of uh, like changing the energy markets is that the electrification of some of the areas is very low, um, which makes distributed energy systems even more compelling because at the end of the day, they have close to uh, no competition, one. And second, when the grid is there, like when we did some of our research, we realized that the price of like electricity produced by the grid could be 10x more expensive than what we see in Europe, which also makes kind of um, renewables energy system 10x more competitive uh, in Africa than they are in Europe. Um, so it felt like, as, assuming you're interested in the energy market, it felt right actually to rather invest in emerging markets than um, invest in Europe, and we were uh, fortunate enough to meet um, Svet Sine and Hendrik, their latest co-founder, um, that um, had the ambition to change that and starting in, the, in emerging markets, but we shared the ambition of building a truly global company starting from there. Excellent. I think I, 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 I love this belief, and I, we, need, we need people in fund like you. So if I come back to you, Stan, I think I've heard Nigeria, because I can imagine that. Uh, probably the, the main market in Africa. Are there other markets that you are tapping into the continent? And if not, are you planning to expand into Africa? Um, yes, good question. So, as you said, we all know Nigeria is moving extremely fast, uh, but we are actually also active in other countries um, across Western Africa, both in Sierra Leone and Ghana and Togo and in Chad. Um, and on the, on the more eastern southern side, we're active in Kenya and Tanzania, uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe and, and also looking uh, at South Africa, of course. Um, and there's a lot, a lot of different factors driving why we can be active in, in these different countries. As Louis said, sometimes it's, uh, it's basically a bad uh, distribution grid, um, unreliable power. Uh, blackouts that are driving the need for more decentralized uh, energy. Um, it can also be tariffs that are driving uh, driving the need. Um, and basically, we're we're active both in in rural areas. Uh, you see mini grids deployment in in rural villages, but we are also active in urban areas where there's a huge need for backup power. Um, and there's a there's a drive for this backup power to be supplied by renewable energy and, and not by pure diesel generation. And that's where we come in because we can facilitate that. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So, um, Luis, is Point9 planning any further investment in the sector energy? Because I did hear that at the start, you say that AMP was the first one, but are you planning to do 
more in the sector? Uh, yes, we, we are. Uh, at the same time, we are opportunistic. So the way we look at investments is like we're software specialists. One, uh, but if you have, uh, we are very happy to look at investment opportunities that are software opportunities in the energy markets for sure. Okay, that's fine. That's uh, short and sweet. I'm sure uh, many people will be, will be listening. So uh, let me go, go back to you, uh, Zvet. So I just wanted to know, because we talked about software company here. So, and clearly one thing that we could see is the digital economy is uh, absolutely growing, you know, even fast tracking. And the event of COVID has just accelerated this change. And I wanted to know, according to you, so how important are those digital solutions for the continent of Africa to move towards full electrification by 2030, which is the SDG 7? Yeah, thanks, thanks Tony, for the question. Um, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's critical in many ways, right? Um, I, I don't really need to give you other examples of where it's been very important, like the prevalence of, of mobile phones and what the impact there has been, the spread of mobile money, for example, and how that's allowed people in, in remote places with you know, weak infrastructure, weak physical links, bad roads to communicate, to exchange with each other. Um, and we see a very similar trend with energy. Again, as, as Stina, for example, made the point and you yourself did also, there's so many places with poor infrastructure uh, where people are not getting power at all, or even if they are, they're getting very unreliable power. Now, the more we can enable um, energy developers and operators to actually deploy infrastructure in these locations, the more we can enable them to, to run this infrastructure successfully, um, to know what's happening with all of their systems, no matter how remote they are. And, and as you say, especially in the times of COVID, to work with those systems from a distance as much as possible, rather than having to send people out on, on field trips, uh, you know, with all of the risks that are involved in that. Um, to be able to run renewable systems that don't require any inputs versus running diesel generators that need to be refueled and maintained and repaired, et cetera. We see just such a huge role um, of digital solutions for, for all of these use cases. Um, and we think, you know, just like with mobile money, it's going to be one of those things that, that actually becomes a really important enabler down the line. Excellent. I think, and I would definitely subscribe to this sentiment. So last question for you, uh, Louis, I think in that case, we are usually, we are regularly being approached by multiple entrepreneurs in, in the continent. And the common single factor amongst pretty much all of them is they're always looking for funding you know, and funders. So I wanted to know, do you have any special message for these kind of people who are looking for money. So what is the way, what is the attitude for them to have? Um, yes, for sure. The first one is like, I'm very happy to, to speak with or to like exchange emails with, uh, with all of them. So don't hesitate to share my emails and, and I'd be happy to, to answer. I think we're a very special source of capital um, uh, and I'm not sure. So we're a venture fund. Uh, so we invest, like, you know, in very risky businesses, as you said, but also ones that have uh, the potential to become very, very large companies. Um, and so at the same time, I think it makes sense to think about what's the right source of funding, depending on like the types of businesses that you're building. Um, and yeah, we invest in businesses where we feel that there is potential to grow um, exponentially uh, in markets that, that are growing very fast. And for that, you need to have the ambition to do that, you need to also kind of, um, be able to sustain that growth, which is not easy. Um, and, and I think we're aware of that. Um, and our job is not only to invest, but to, to more importantly, maybe to partner with entrepreneurs to help them know what they don't know and structure their businesses so that they can get on, um, on that trajectory. So yeah, to make it short, I think it's First, important to think about what's the right source of funding, depending on the project. But if you indeed want to build a very large, scalable business, I'm very happy to chat with anyone listening to that podcast. 
I think you might end up being very much overwhelmed. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but thank you for that. Like I say, uh, I'm dealing with lots of investors and um, not many of them are actually approachable. So having people like yourself that are happy to, uh, to engage and speak with people, it's a first step. Now, whether or not you're going to invest is another thing. But yeah. at least uh, having the opportunity to at least speak is very great. So um, uh, let me then move as well, uh, close also the conversation with you, Zvet, the please, Tin, I also want you to tip in if you can, because that can uh, come into the, also the personal advice. Because the question I want to ask is, for each of you, what would be the biggest advice that you would give to companies who, like you, are going through fundraising? So what is your take? Because um, I heard Amp approach 0.9 before, they say no, now they're saying yes. So you must have done something right, right? So what is the biggest advice, in fact, would you say? And Stan, please tip in as well. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I'd very much echo what Louis said. Um, the, you get the answer no very often and, and for a very wide range of reasons. Um, and that, as an entrepreneur, I, I think is just something that you can't let that get to you. And, and look, you're going to get the answer no, not just from investors. You're going to get it from prospective customers, you're gonna get it from employees and, and, and others, right? Um, and I think you just have to kind of grow a thick skin. For, for investors specifically, I'd say other than kind of the pure perseverance where you keep, keep looking out there, keep looking for opportunities, keep of course, without, without being obnoxious, you know, following up with investors where you think there's a potential match and, and keep sending them updates and see that maybe at some point there will be a fit. I think it's very, good to do two specific things. One of them is be quite clear-eyed about the match um, between uh, what you present to them and what they're looking for. So every investor is going to come in with some, uh, with some hypothesis of what they're looking for. Some investors, as, as Louis said, will say, look, all we want uh, is to be able to see a trajectory of how this becomes really, really huge down the line. Uh, and how this can be a great business. And of course, most investors, especially at the early stage, will be looking for, for what they see as a really solid team. Some investors will say, you know, there is some particular area of impact that I'm looking for. You know, there, certainly in our space, of course, there are investors that say, I want you to demonstrate that, you know, you're going to electrify this many homes, for example. Obviously, that's, we're not in the business of that, but there are some that will do that. Um, and yeah, there, there are some investors that say, look, uh, I don't, you know, I just want to make, um, I want to exit this company in a couple of years and I want to make sure that I make a nice exit. Uh, so there's many, many factors like that, that you should consider, um, as you, as you look for a potential fit with the different investors out there in the ecosystem and make sure that, you know, you're pursuing the ones where there's alignment between your vision for what you want to do with the business and what the investor is looking for. Um, so that's, that's, that's definitely one point. Um, and the, um, yeah, the other point I had was, yeah, make sure that, um, you, uh, you, you put out there, um, the, the kinds of, um, the kinds of communications that, that you want, the kinds of things that they will care about. Um, once you, once you've identified who, who the right ones are, make sure that you're engaging on an ongoing basis. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, showing an understanding for what they're looking for. Excellent. That's great piece of advice. So would you want to add something, Stine, in, into that? Uh, yeah, just one thing to add on what Svet said is, of course, it's about getting an investor to want to invest in you. But it's also just as much uh, you actually... Uh, saying yes to that investor you need to find someone who is the best match for you of course with what uh what that investor is looking to invest in but also on the personal level um and from the beginning uh it has been a very good match with uh with point nine um and with uh, with our other two investors rubber partnership and musha ventures they're bringing in exactly the expertise we need from their different areas um, the second thing I want to uh, point out uh, as, as, a, as advice for, for other entrepreneurs is 
make sure you have the right team with you. Um, that's going to be one of the main concerns about the investors when you speak to them is, do you have a team that's able to deliver? Do you have uh, the spots filled that you need uh, to have your team grow? Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've been quite lucky with my co-founders, at least in the rest of our team. Excellent. Definitely. Like you say, uh, uh, teamwork make the dream work. Uh, definitely. So um, it was a pleasure for me to talk to all three of you uh, uh, today, this afternoon, my time here. So I'm sure people will have a fun time listening to what you have said. They will learn a lot from your experience. So Luis, they will overfill your inbox, I can promise you. But uh, as I say, so uh, we are very happy at Renewables in Africa to learn about this partnership that you are forming. And uh, obviously, if there is anything that we can do, we make we make sure that we can also uh, contribute and support and support this way. First of all, already by bringing up this uh, this interview to uh, to the people, so that uh, more can learn about what you are offering to uh, to the market and 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 the industry. All that is left for me to say is um, I had a very good time talking to all of you, and um, have a blessed and a fun day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Bye -bye. Tony.